The nation's history is far more a record of imperial victory than a saga of wars waged and battles won. Its greatness lies in glowing furnaces and smoking stacks, in skilled labor, inventive genius, and the spirit of enterprise that is so typical of America. And typical of the steel industry, literally the backbone of a thousand industries, is the panorama that reveals the magnitude of any one of the major mills where the manufacture of steel involves a tremendous investment. Here, before a worker can be given a job, the company by which he is employed has an average of more than $11,000 for each man employed, and that does not include wages. Incidentally, note one unusual feature of this industrial scene, which would not be found in any other country in the world. The automobiles are all work in the mills, men who are now age rate in the history of the industry. Into such a center of activity, the raw materials are poured from train and ship. Thousands of tons of coal aid for the blast furnaces, mountains of iron ore, and vast quantities of limestone. They are charging a furnace, ore from which the iron is to be melted, coke to provide an intense heat in the base of the furnace as a superheated air blast passes through it, limestone to flux the impurities from the ore. Up to the top goes the laden larry to feed one of these giants, that may eat up as much as 3,000 tons of solid raw materials a day. Now they are preparing to tap a furnace at the base, where they may draw off as much as 100 tons of molten iron at a time. An oxygen torch burns into a clay-plugged hole, but no chance for injury on this job. That asbestos suit and helmet would protect the any stray sparks or spatters. A thin stream of metal begins to flow, glowing liquid iron. The stream swells in volume, a fiery river if you ever saw one. But you, as an uninitiated onlooker, could not be expected to know that these men in charge are very much in command. With modern mechanical devices and highly developed safety measures that enable them to control the flowing metal with less danger to themselves than you face every day in your home or on the street. Today, the American steel mill is as safe a place to work as any industrial establishment. In fact, company after company has prided itself on winning safety trophies, which stand for a prolonged period without a single serious accident. A sample of the metal will be cast into a small block and cooled for a quick analysis by the metallurgical laboratory to check its quality. Meanwhile, the flaming river is directed through channels which lead to the edge of the tapping floor, where it spills into huge ladles resting on flat cars. Ladle after ladle is filled, until finally, the laden train is on its way across the yard to its destination, the steel-making departments, where the molten iron in the ladles will be poured into a large container called a mixer, holding many tons, and here kept hot, so that it can be used in its molten state in one of the three major processes in making steel. Of these, the Bessemer converter process is the oldest for producing a tonnage product available at low cost for a multitude of uses. Here stand the operators in safety behind shatterproof glass. Number three is going to pour. One of the monsters, like a huge egg with a top sliced off, tips over on its trunnions and pours into a ladle its load of steel that glows like the sunset and shoots millions of sparks through the dim traceries of girders and all down the length of the arena. Very different from the spectacular Bessemer is the squat little electric furnace which makes special steels because of its smaller capacity and the ease with which it can be controlled so accurately. From this process come the high-grade alloy steels such as stainless and all sorts of special steels with special qualities. And then there are the open hearths. While the roaring flame and fireworks from Bessemer converters still provide a thrilling spectacle, and capacity for producing steel in the electric furnace has been increasing in the last few years, 90% of steel today is produced in open hearth furnaces because of the demand for tailor-made steels in large quantities, which can be produced with this flexible and efficient method. And by the way, there is one interesting factor in the making of steel, 
just as important as the virgin iron fresh from ore smelted in the blast furnace. It is scrap. Most of the scrap metal will be found en route to the open hearth department. Remelted scrap steel constituting about 50% of the total steel produced today. There's a carload of sheared ends. There's another. And there's a car that may hold all that is left of your 1929 automobile, now on its way to become part of a steel, and a better steel, perhaps for your next car. In this huge structure, the open hearth floor, which is typical of American steel mills, a long line of furnaces holds steel in the making. Steel that will someday enter your life, perhaps carry you safely on some journey, provide you with shelter, create an endless variety of comforts and conveniences. A supply of finely ground dolomite has been piled before the furnace that is to be charged. It will melt like glass and fill any holes that may have been burned through the lining by the previous heat, forming a solid bottom for the fresh charge. Then the charging begins. From the train load of scrap which has been brought close to the furnace, an electric charging machine lifts box after box and pushes its burden through the door of the furnace. The operator sitting at a safe distance, spinning the ram and dumping its load. There is the rumble of a giant traveling crane overhead, moving in with its burden. <laughs>